हाँ सर हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आर लाइव सेशन विद डॉक्टर दिनेश भुरानी ही इज गोइंग टुडे इज गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट बोन मैरो ट्रांसप्लांट्स कंडीशंस टाइप्स एंड आल्सो डोनेशन सो ओवर टू यू डॉक्टर भुरानी I am Dr. Dinesh Burani. I am a hematolo uh, hematologist uh, and bone marrow transplant specialist in Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute, Delhi. I am going to talk to you about the bone marrow. What is bone marrow transplant? What are the types of transplant? Uh, what happens to the donor? What happens to the patient? The process and complications and the cost. Uh, I'll try to cover in a few minutes, and then uh, uh, we'll be open for the question answer sessions. Uh, bone marrow transplant is a kind of a transplant like we talk about the renal transplant liver transplants where we uh, give a organ from one person to the another person this transplant is different where you don't give any organ you are giving a just a stem cells means a few ml of blood so the donor is not losing any organ so you can uh, it's like a blood donation you are giving a stem cell donation and there is a no loss to the uh, to the donor in the other transplants you need to match the blood group in the bone marrow transplant you don't have to match the blood group who will be eligible to give the blood do the bone marrow uh, donors uh, usually uh, the brother sisters who usually match so we need to do a test is called a hla test uh, uh, that's a blood test or it can be done from the mouth uh, surface uh, swabbing uh, when you see the uh, matching uh it can be a full match in family the six uh antigens should match between the the recipient and the donor if you are looking for a donor which is unrelated which is out of the family from any uh place in the world then you have to match for the 10 antigens uh and nowadays we are doing a half match transplants from the family so there are various types of donors can be the full match family full match Uh, unrelated donor uh, mismatch unrelated donor or half match uh, family donor is called a haplotransplant the bone marrow transplants are usually two types one is called autologous bone marrow transplantation where you are using your own stem cells for the transplant so you collect the when the patient's disease is under control you collect the stem cells store into the fridge then you give a chemotherapy and after the chemotherapy you give back the stem cells and allow them to regrow basically uh, the idea of doing aut autologous transplant is to keep the stem cells away from the body before giving the chemotherapy give the chemotherapy in the high amount which cannot be given if you don't take it out the stem cell and then give back the stem cell so giving a higher amount of chemotherapy then followed by stem cells allows the many uh, diseases to be cured with a higher dose of chemotherapy basically the autologous transplant is a way of giving high dose of chemotherapy the another one is allogeneic transplant where you the other people are the donors so it is not your own stem cells you are using the someone else stem cells it can be bone marrow stem cells it can be peripheral blood stem cells it can be a cord blood stem cells when you are using a, a, a brother or sisters it is called a sibling allogeneic transplant if you are using a unrelated donor it is called a matched unrelated donor transplant and if you are using a half matched family donor it is called a haplo transplant we'll come back to the autologous transplant usually the most of the commonly the autologous transplant is done in myeloma and lymphomas uh, uh, the autoimmune disorders and neuroblastoma so these are the certain condition and some cases in acute uh, myeloid leukemia in some cases uh, uh, so these are the major indications for autologous transplant all patients with the myeloma below 65 years after the control of the disease with the three or four cycles of chemotherapy should undergo autologous transplant as a consolidation therapy so all patient should have autologous transplant if they are below 65 years in lymphoma autologous transplant is not done up front usually is not done up front it is done if your disease has come back we try to control with the salvage chemotherapy followed by autologous transplant so not an upfront setting but if the patient relapses then you do a autologous transplant uh, various uh, autoimmune disorders also uh, benefit with the autologous bone marrow transplant the allogeneic transplant is done in the cancers and non cancerous conditions 
major non cancerous conditions are aplastic anemia and uh, thalassemia so the most common indication in our country will be thalassemia and second will be aplastic anemia if you do allogeneic transplant in thalassemia there is a very high chance of cure with the allogeneic transplantation from family uh, uh, if you, that depends on the age of the child and how much iron is there in his body so if it's done within a first 7 years and less iron in the body usually the success rate is up to 90% if the child is growing is of a elder group and has a more iron in the body the success rate slowly comes down but it still can be uh, the transplant can be done up to 15 to 20 years aplastic anemia majority can be cured with the uh, uh, bone marrow transplant up to 50 years of age anyone who is diagnosed with aplastic anemia should undergo allogenic transplant in cancerous conditions mostly the allogenic transplant is done in the uh, hematological malignancies mainly acute myeloid leukemia acute lymphoblastic leukemia chronic myeloid leukemia if it is not controlled certain cases of chronic lymphocytic leukemia or lymphomas mostly it is done in the acute myeloid leukemia many of the patients who cannot be cured with the chemotherapy or other treatments can be cured with the allogenic transplant allogenic transplant is not without the complications major complication is the infections during the transplant one is called a graft versus host disease where the, the donor cells starts troubling the patient's body is called a graft versus host disease third is a rejection the body does not accept the graft and fourth is the disease coming back is called the relapse so these are the four five major complications which are related to the uh, allogenic transplants once the patient has uh, come out of these complications or had not any complication has a very high chance of getting cured from his disease uh, with this, uh, I'll uh, open, open to the question answer. Yeah, doctor, the first question from one of our viewers that we have here is, is using cord blood stem, stem cells an accepted practice in India? Cord blood, the uh, major problem is the number of stem cells in the cord are very small. So someone who is an adult requiring a transplant, uh, you need to have a two cords used rather than one cord. So one cord will not have enough stem cells. All the stem cells uh, stored, the cord blood stored uh, for the public use are abroad. If you take a two cord blood from abroad, it's very costly. It goes up to the 25 lakh to 30 lakhs. So practically, cord blood transplant is not appropriate for our country. Uh, majority of the places now they have shown the half match family transplant is equivalent to the cord blood transplant. Even in a western world, many centers are preferring a uh, half match family transplant over the cord blood because of the various uh, low number of stem cells and the uh, uh, retrieving uh, difficulty. So the, probably the cord blood uh, uh, can be replaced by half matched uh, half flow transplant. Yeah, that answers the question, doctor. Thank you. The next question we have is from Mr. Bobby Narayan. He's from Fiji and he wants to know that his son is eight years old. And he has ALL, that is, I think, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Uh, uh, what is the question? Uh, the que he's just uh, stated that his son has this condition and is there any hope for him? I mean, uh, so. A majority of the kids with the acute lymphoblastic leukemia are cured with the chemotherapy. It is a long chemotherapy over the period of two to three years and they do not require a transplant. Some of them do not respond appropriately or relapse after the chemotherapy, they will require a bone marrow transplant. So I hope he would have been started on the chemotherapy and I hope he is doing well with the chemotherapy. Right. Thank you, doctor. Okay. So the next question from uh, Ranjita Maharaj, again from Fiji. She says, uh, is there any cure for autism with BMT? Uh, I am not the expert of autism and I don't think, but still being a transplanter, I don't see there is a cure for autism with the bone marrow transplant. Right. Okay. So the next question from Nigeria, Mr. Al Hassan. He says, is there a cure for disquiet lupus erythromatosis? Uh, I am not the expert of uh, uh, disquiet erythromatosis. We do a transplant for the autoimmune uh, disorders. 
so we need to find out what treatment was done earlier uh, is there any uh, is the patient is fit for the transplant and in his condition in his status whether the transplant can be curative for him or not but we do the transplant for the autoimmune disorders right another question that we have here is should the disease be completely in remission after chemotherapy before allogenic bone marrow transplant can be carried out? Uh, it's not an easy answer. We would like to have a uh, disease under complete remission before we go for the uh, transplant. But some people cannot attain a complete response, achieve a partial or a, a good partial response and the, the, the physician decides to take him for the transplant. And some people get cured with a, even though the disease was not controlled before going for the transplant. We wish to have a disease under control before going for the transplant, but sometimes we have to take a decision to take the patients with the disease also. Right. And the next question we have from one of our viewers again online. He says, how long does it take to recover from bone marrow transplant and what are the major risk, uh, risk post-surgery? Transplant is a process. Uh, it is not like a one-day surgery, you go to the operation theater, have a surgery done and come out and everything is successful. Right. It's not like that. It's like uh, putting a seed in, in a seed, putting the seed and it's like a plantation. So you put the seed and then wait for the, the seed to grow up into the plant. Uh, it's a slow process. Uh, in this, we give a conditioning regimen, which is the chemotherapy or chemotherapy plus radiation to make the body condition to accept the donor cells. So that goes on for six to seven days. After that, we collect the stem cells and give it so that the, uh, the stem cells are given like a sim simply as a blood transfusion. Because we have given a chemotherapy or radiation, all the, the cells of the body will go down. So the, your red cells, white cells and platelets will be low. So for the next uh, 10 to 15 days, your all the blood counts will be low. You will require a protective environment uh, to prevent from the infections. It takes uh, that much time for the, the stem cells to grow into the mature cells and then your donor cells will start uh, coming up. Once your donor cells have recovered, usually we discharge from the, uh, the hospital. So three to four weeks you are in the hospital. After that also there is a risk of a lot of complications. You need to be close to your uh, hospital vicinity. Usually up to two months you have to be in the close vicinity of the hospital after discharge. Uh, the complication expected are in infections, any kind of infections, the bacterial, fungal or viral infections. Among the viral infections, uh, CMV is a major infection, uh, fungus is an aspergillus infection or any bacterial infection can occur. Your body can reject the graft, your cells may not recover and uh, uh, you may require a subsequent transplant or there is a risk of uh, risk, uh, infections will be there because you have not engrafted. There will be a risk of graft versus host disease. As I said, the stem cells will go in, they, and they will start destroying the recipient body. It's called a graft versus host disease. And the risk of disease coming back will be there. So in, during this period, we keep monitoring for uh, these uh, main complications. All right. And um, uh, the next question that says, can brain cancer be cured with BMT? Brain cancer. Except the, uh, the lymphoma, the brain lymphoma can be cured with the autologous transplant. No other brain cancer can be cured by the uh, transplantation. Right. And is it safe for children to undergo BMT, doctor? The children can tolerate much better than the adults uh, the transplant. So because they, they're, 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 uh, they're, uh, they're, uh, the body is more uh, powerful than the adult, adults. Uh, so I think they, they are they are more uh, there will be less complications than they can uh, withstand the transplant by Right, that sounds good, doctor. So uh, another question we have from one of our viewers, and uh, she says, apart from immediate family members like parents and siblings, who all in the family can undergo HLA mapping for a child who needs allogenic BMT? Can anyone be a donor as long as HLA completely matches? The chances of matching is uh, highest with uh, your uh, siblings. So, if any brother or sister will have a 30 to 40 percent chance of having HLA matching with the patient. If they don't match, the parents can have a chances, but the, the parents have the less than 5 percent chance that you can have a complete HLA match with your parents. If you are looking for a full match donor, as you go away from the, uh, the immediate members like uh, siblings or parents, the chances of uh, others matching will be low. It's uh, similar to the like any unrelated donor. 
So the chances of matching unrelated donor will be one in a thousand. So that the each member of the other other family members apart from the immediate member, there will be one in thousand chances of matching. So we, you need to um, uh, ma uh, screen a thousand people to say whether this is a, you have a one match. Right. And the last question, uh, from where can you get or harvest stem cells? Previously, the bone marrow stem cells were harvested from the bone marrow. The donor used to go to the uh, operation theater, give an anesthesia, put it back, and from the both side of the back, you do a spray of bone marrow. So multiple punctures and trying to collect the bone marrow from the your pelvic bone. But now the method has changed. Uh, and you allow, you give injections for the stem cells to come out into the blood, and you have an apheresis machine. So the patient and the donor goes on the apheresis machine. The, the blood goes into the, the machine, it collects the stem cells and um, sends back the whole rest of the blood. So it's from the peripheral blood, so it's much easier on the apheresis machine in comparison to the bone marrow harvest. Right, thank you so much doctor, that was really an informative session and hope our viewers have had all their questions answered. So thank you guys for Thanks watching for, us, uh, thank you doctor, thank, thank you. you.